a voice and thank the Lord if you know that he's about to do something new for you in this season and in this time can you thank him in advance no way to see what he will do just believe and trust that he will do something new he's bringing you out of that situation he's bringing you out of that mess the psalmist says in Psalms 40 that he has brought my he has brought me out of the mary clay and set my feet upon the rock can you thank him can you thank him can you bless him because you are god alone from before time began you are on your throne you are god alone and right now in the good times and bad you are on your throne you are god alone you are god alone you are god alone from before time began Come on, sing it with faith in your spirit. Yes, you are God alone. we give you praise we bless you for this afternoon this evening rather we thank you for what you're about to do you said in your word that behold you will do a new thing and I know tonight by the ministry of your word you will do something in the life of someone that will elevate us that will translate and transform us from glory to glory in Jesus name amen now I've prayed for you you are going to pray I want us to pray this afternoon or evening and say Lord visit me by the power of your word let me hear something let me see something that will change and transform my life that will move me to another place in destiny and in glory in the name of Jesus lift your voice and pray everywhere make sure you're not distracted the service is on make sure you are praying somebody should pray somebody raise your voice talk to him visit me by the power of your word May I receive divine revelation and understanding. Illuminate my heart, enlighten my heart, open to me the wisdom of your word. Do something new. Are you praying? Marahasibrahatokosibrahadehandoromoskuparagahadeh Ebrahata sabrahato kobro sozo bronde Ebroho sozo robroho samaharakata ma ila harona Moroko basibrahata
in Jesus name every Sunday we come here to experience the wisdom the presence and the power of our Lord Jesus that means that for every meeting in this place it's supposed to be an encounter of a lifetime for you that is the reason why I urge you to pray before we get to the word pray so that your heart can be prepared I want you to pray again and say Lord by reason of my commitment to pneumatic every Sunday let there be a notable and a visible transformation in my life that I will not need to tell people that I came for these meetings let my life be a report card that expresses what you are doing in this place do you understand that can you lift your voice and pray just for two minutes please pray please pray don't be absent-minded close your eyes if you need to and talk to God please pray let my life become the expression of everything that you are doing in this place let my life reveal your wisdom your presence your power the sacrifice of my commitment to these meetings Sunday after Sunday let the reward of such be visible let it be visible in my life are you praying come on raise your voice raise your voice raise your voice Hela braha subraha tamale brehete ke baha suta zibraha tabara haba kate baha suda me proho sapra tahabra kate la basuza me brehete ke bala rasa tora baha te asuda blessed be your name Jesus holy word Long preserved for us in this world. There is sound with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient world sing. Ancient with life with transforming power let us hear something that we've never heard before and let our eyes be open to see 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 let the wisdom of your word bring solution to a lifelong problem Amen. in somebody's life today Amen. and let there be joy multiplied in our hearts Amen. in jesus mighty name we pray 
please scream that amen louder as you can. Now clap your hands, give God praise, and take your seats in the presence of the Lord. We have come with open hearts, all and the ancient words. We have come with all the hearts, all the ancient words I want you to pay attention this evening. Make sure you're not distracted. Hold your writing materials together and let us receive the word that God has for us today the dominion systems of the kingdom part three the dominion systems of the kingdom part three now the lord spoke to us at the beginning of this year that this is our year of dominion and we believe that word because we know god will systematically and by his power elevate us and cause us to rise above situations above circumstances above natural and even supernatural limitations dominion is our destiny he created us for the purpose of having dominion over the earth it is our dominion on earth that exercises or that expresses the lordship of jesus taught us to pray and said your will be done in earth as it is in heaven and so every teaching from this platform all through this year is going to bring different perspectives to this subject of dominion so that we can understand and walk in it the essence for all of these teachings is not so that you have a nicely written sermon in your books you cannot do anything so it's not just for you to have it written down and then go home and say oh that was a powerful sermon but that you commit yourself to listening you commit yourself to reading to meditating and to a lifestyle of obedience everything that is taught is the undiluted revelation of the word of god if you apply it by obedience and by faith you will see it produce the very result that it professes and that is the attitude that i want us to to use to receive the word of god this evening we started the dominion systems of the kingdom this teaching about three weeks ago trying to explore the systematic operations of dominion in the kingdom the kingdom of god is governed by laws and principles when you know and understand and align yourself with these laws and principles you are pedestaled in such a way that dominion becomes your lifestyle it becomes your expression in other words the blessings of god are yours provided you align with the systems of his kingdom that will bring the manifestation of the same god is a very systematic god the proof of that is in creation everything that god has created both visible and invisible operates within a predictable system contrary to popular belief the realm of the spirit and the operation of the spirit is not uh, 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 illogical or spontaneous as it were it is a highly energized highly informative and highly a uh, 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 systematic kingdom such that you can predict your growth and you can predict your transformation and you can predict one level after another that God can translate you as far as your work in the kingdom is concerned if you understand what I'm saying say amen and that's the reason why it is important that we explore the word of God to understand 
how the kingdom of God operates so that you can bring that to your advantage and live in victory and in dominion on the earth. The first system we looked at was prayer. We saw how that prayer is the system of interaction and communication as far as the kingdom of God is concerned. And that if God will ever do anything on earth, it has to be transported or conveyed through the ministry and the system of prayer. Last week we saw two more. We talked about light as one of the systems of the kingdom. Important to know that God is light according to the word of God. And God himself is light and from him comes light. Light speaks of wisdom, knowledge and understanding. It is with this light that we can reign and rule on the earth. This light is what, is what empowers us, enlightens us and empowers us spiritually and mentally so that we can understand how God operates. We saw the system of um, the anointing. And I told us that, that once you become a believer, you will be introduced to the system of the anointing by reason of the Holy Spirit's presence in your life. The anointing is God's divine energy. And if God will walk with a man or will walk through a man, he will make an investment of the anointing. So every God-ordained purpose or net cannot be fully established or fully executed without the anointing. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the Bible says, with the Holy Ghost and with power. That was born again. Thank you. Number four, love. Is it because we are in the month of love? <laughs> All right. Love. Look for a love song for me before I finish teaching this point so we can sing. Did you hear? Uh -huh. Number four. Love. Please get... There is a teaching we did three years ago in 2020. I want, I want us to get immediate. Please look for that teaching. I want to strongly recommend that everybody listens to that teaching. All right? While I was preparing this study, the Holy Spirit reminded me about it. I couldn't get it online, so I had to go back to the Jota of that year. The teaching is love, the ultimate way. Please look for that message. And this week, we are going to put it online or probably after the service, you can just walk up to the media stand and they will give you the message. Please listen to it, okay? It's strongly connected to what we are going to talk about today. Love. First John chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. First John chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is, for God is, for God is. So the next time somebody says, I love you, you should try to understand what he or she is saying. If somebody says, I love you, it means he's saying, I got you. In other words, I'm bonded to you by God himself. And if it is true, then it means that that bonding or that relationship is unconditional. That relationship or that bonding is not based on human excellence. It's not based on how qualitative that individual is. Because the Bible says love covers a multitude of sin. All right. Let's look at verse 9 to 11 of the same verse. Yes. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us. Excuse me, please. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us. That God has sent his only begotten son into the world. 
that we might live through him so in verse 8 the bible tells us that god is love and in verse 9 he began to define love from god's perspective that the very definition of love is that god sent his son god did not tell us why he loves us he only shows us how much he loves us if you study the bible very well god never showed us or told us why he loved us he only showed us how much he loved us that he sent his only begotten son to die in this is love not that we loved god but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation the word propitiation means exchange or atoning sacrifice now in the old testament the uh, the priest when god established the levitical priesthood you understand that the children of israel when they got to the wilderness uh, god established the tribe of levi in the nation of israel as the tribe of priests and a priest is naturally or primarily a mediator a go-between an intercessor between god and men between spirits and men so these priests were saddled with the responsibility of offering daily sacrifices these sacrifices were to exchange for the sins of god's people these sacrifices did not take away the guilt of sin it was only an excuse for their sin so that god will look upon them with mercy and still walk with them and fulfill his purpose in their life so this practice was called atonement now that's another meaning for the word propitiation it says but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atonement the exchange the exchanging sacrifice for our sins verse 11 beloved if god so loved us let's read together from this point one to go we also ought to love one another underline the word ought means must non-negotiable all right in other words it's not a choice for you to love or not to love the bible says we ought to love one another first corinthians 13 verse 13 more scriptures on love and now abide faith hope love these three but the greatest of these is what talk to me the greatest of this is what so love is the greatest force that's the first thing you should write love is the greatest force love is the greatest force write that number one number two write this down love conquers all and anything that cannot be conquered by love cannot be conquered at all or does not exist let me repeat what i said anything that cannot be conquered by love cannot be conquered at all or does not exist if you ask me to choose i will choose the later sense a statement doesn't exist because there's nothing love cannot conquer amen that's the reason why when two people who are married truly love each other and they are committed to that love no matter the challenges and the situations and the storms of life that that relationship will face they will remain together that's the reason why the bible says what shall separate us is it what no who shall separate us from the love of god and then it begins to list everything shall tribulation famine pestilence peril hunger nakedness that means even when you go naked you don't have clothes to wear to church you are still not separated from the love of god i wish that was i can say that for everybody there are some people that if they don't have a new cloth, they don't go to church on sunday if you are among them say amen if trumpet sound now okay ladies say amen for them uh, it's, it's all right amen love conquers all 
and the scripture says nothing can separate us or shall separate us from the love of God the reason why love conquers all is because love is God and God is and will remain the greatest of all write this down love is a purifier it purifies our motives love is a purifier love is a purifier love purifies your motives your motives are your intentions the real reason behind why you do what you do love purifies so love is actually what you can use to check the genuineness or to authenticate the state of your motive love that means if love is the reason for why you do what you do then it is to a large extent justified all right it is to a large extent justified that doesn't mean you can steal for love amen you know there was a story that uh, my dad used to tell us many years ago that there was this young man who so loved a lady dearly I don't know if that kind of love you know well all of these are brothers marry first then we'll test that love amen so every time he will send text messages to her and anytime he sees her, he'll confess to her that i love you so much i love you with everything that is within me i can do anything for you is that true so one day according to the story um, it was raining heavily and the lady was sick and it was a very serious sickness she was almost to the point of death and then in the midst of her pain she called her younger brother and said please go and call my lover for me i want him to be by my side just in case i die and the brother went under that heavy storm to the house of this her lover and told him ah your your loved one is so sick oh, she's almost at the point of death and she said if she will die she wants to she wants you to be by her side please come and the young man said eh, tell her that after the rain finish falling i will go amen so love is a purifier first corinthians chapter 13 verse 1 love is a purifier though i speak with the tongues of men and of angels but have not love i have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal that means <laughs> spirituality without love is noise i love you lord for your mercies never fails me all my days i held in your hands from the moment that i wake up until i lay my head i will sing of the goodness of god sing the chorus together all of my life oh. let's continue verse 2 that was just a you know uh, breathe <laughs> and though I have the gift of prophecy now the prophecy written in this chapter is actually the matured stage of the prophetic this is not the gift of prophecy written in chapter 12 this one is not the gift of the spirit in chapter 12 I don't have time to explain this is this is like the office of a prophet this is the highest level of the prophetic 
the proof of that is look at what follows after that word prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge is there anything higher than that who would like to operate in that realm where you understand all mysteries you know what that means that means you you know the password to anything you know the password to anybody's phone to anybody's bank account to anything It would take God for you not to be an armed robber. <laughs> Amen. Imagine that. That there is nothing you don't know. You have access to all kinds of knowledge. The Bible says, even if you have all that, and you even have faith so that you can remove mountains. Ha! You will open a ministry with that one. No? Mountain Movers Ministries International. You know, we are, this generation is very intelligent. A young man will not stay and allow God to walk on him. His, his intelligent mind, his renewed mind will just pop up a sentence in form of an idea. The test of that is go and start. When you have survived five years, then God really called you. I'm telling you, we are very intelligent. People are intelligent. These days. They can forge name from anywhere. And their name, when you take it to corporate affairs, it will be unopposed. Ministry is not by that one, no. Jesus never had a name for his ministry. But 2,000 years later, the world has not recovered. The Bible says, even if you have all that, but have not love, I am what? I know why you don't want to talk. Verse 3. I'm just showing you that love is a purifier. Verse 3, please. And though I bestow all my goods to, the, to feed the poor, charity, and though I give my body to be burned, zeal, but have not love, it profits me not. So love is the real purifier of our motives. I've said it before that God does not reward your actions but he, he, he discerns your intentions to reward your actions so the reason why your actions are rewarded is because your intentions your motives are right that's why the psalmist says let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable look at this he said even if I give my body to be burned. Is there anything greater than that? That means that there are sacrifices we may make in the name of God that will count as nothing before God if it was not propelled by love. Maybe you did it to make a name so that they will say you did this or you did that. If now, if we if we start sharing food to widows and all of that and then we'll post it online and put it there before you know we'll have a lot of it you know thousands of likes thousands of views ah this man of god is a genuine man of god he's giving food to people because i don't know why believers don't want pastors to prosper so the only way you can reward their pain for the suffering in nigeria is that be giving to people so that ah, you are the only one that how can you be the only one that is blessed the Bible says, if in, in all of this, if you have not love, it's counted as nothing. So, love is the God factor in everything. Love is the best motive for the success of any divine venture. Love is the best motive for the success of any divine venture. I've already screamed about motive there first john chapter 5 verse 2 first john chapter 5 verse 2 by this we know that we love the children of god when we love god and keep his commandment love is the best motive for the success of every and any divine venture so if anything that god is doing in your life will succeed and will be and bring you to fulfillment love must be the motive in fact the plan that brought our salvation our redemption and especially our creation was propelled by love 
ask yourself a question why did god create man just stop writing for a moment and ask yourself why did god create man because god can do without man god can do without you actually Jesus told them at the temple when they were trying, they say, Ah, will you not stop these ones from crying out and praising you? Jesus said, If I stop them, even the stones will cry out. So, why did God create you? Ask yourself that question. Why am I alive? There are people better than you that have passed away, that are dead. People with greater visions, some of you, even your siblings, that when they died, you cried more because you felt you should have gone for them. So why did he create you? Why did he save you? It was easy for God when Adam sinned. It was easy for God to just wipe off the whole earth. Everybody died. And create another man. Isn't it? But he worked out a plan. And that plan he was patient for 4,000 years. To fulfill it. You because the lady said no to your proposal just two months of going around her you can't sleep you can't eat again but man has been saying no to god for four thousand years before the coming of jesus but god was patient that is love so you see that we are products of love that's the reason why god gives us the command of love it is not negotiable it's not a suggestion that okay you can try to the reason is because we are products of love it is in us and god wants us to begin to express this because this is the the time or that will be the time when god is fully expressed and revealed to creation when the sons and daughters of god walk in love romans chapter 5 verse 8 says that why but god demonstrated his love towards us that while we were yet sinners christ died for us while we were yet sinners while we were yet sinners that's not a good business while we were yet sinners christ died he would have waited for us to return to him then christ would die and you know like i always say the bible says in john 3:16, that god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and this is my problem with god that whosoever believeth in him no if i was god it can't be like that though everybody must believe you know what it means? How many of you have they've taken your last card before? For you that have last card, me, I don't have last card. You understand? I don't have last card. Why well, I don't believe in last card? Because the money you call last card, it, it was given to you. So if that one goes, another one will come. That whosoever. Sometimes I think about that. He gave it, say, it's your option to believe or not. And there are many unbelievers walking over the surface of this earth. Christianity, the last time I did the research, is just close to 2.2 billion. Not up to 2.5 billion Christians on earth. In a population of 8 point something billion people. That means over 5 billion to 6 billion souls are living, not animals, human beings are on earth. They don't know God. They are unbelievers walking around, living a life of wickedness and sin. And God is still quiet. So we can understand the extent of love that is required of us. Love will be expressed in three forms in your life as a believer. Number one, love for God. The love that God requires you or commands you to express, which is from Him, will be expressed in three forms. The first form is your love for God. It was the love of God that brought salvation, that brought Jesus to die on the cross. Your love for God is your response to salvation. Your love for God is proven when He becomes first in all you do. Your love for God is proven when you, when it becomes first in all you do. 
in Mark chapter 10 from verse 17 downwards, the Bible gave us the story of a man. The Bible called him the rich young ruler. He came to Jesus, said, good master, what will I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said, well, go and fulfill the commandments. Do this, do that, do this. He said, I've done all that from my youth. And the Bible, one of those verses, the Bible says, Jesus looked at him and loved him. And then Jesus said, there's one thing that you lack. Go and sell all you have. And remember, the Bible says a young, rich, young ruler. Not an old man. If he was an old man, this world is not my own. I'm not, he's just preparing for heaven. So he would just sell it. But it's a young man that wants to enjoy life. Jesus said, you go sell everything you have. And give it to the poor. Ha! At least give it to rich people. So that they'll remember you tomorrow. He said, give it to the poor. All the poor has to offer you is thank you. If they give you the thank you. He said, then you, come and follow me. And the Bible says, the young man walked away sorrowful. Because he had many treasures. He claimed to love God. But the test was given to him. And it was seen that God was not the first in all that he did. Your love for God will put God first in everything that you do. It will be proven in all you do. It, God will become the reason behind everything. Behind every sacrifice. Behind every commitment. Behind your life as a Christian. Behind the reason why even though you are in a, 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 a position to compromise, you refuse to compromise. When you are with that girl in a room that there's no no chair. I touched you, right? That's my way of saying happy Valentine. I don't know what the lady is looking for in the house of a man that doesn't have chair. It's only a bed that is there. What are you looking for there? Huh? That's that's a slaughterhouse. That <laughs> You know, I want to kill um, a goat or a cow. They, they lie it down. <laughs> Ladies, are you hearing me? No, don't go to his house. So stay outside. Stay in the compound. Do the greeting and everything. Let him profess the love there. Say amen. You enter that kind of room, you are in trouble. Amen. So as a young man, it is your love for God, even when you are in that closet with that lady and there's nobody there. Just chop, clean out and go. Nobody will know. You just wash your mouth with the blood of Jesus and continue. It is your love for God that will make you say no. That means love can make you say no. Love can reject some things, can deny some things. Because we think love always accepts. No. Maybe in a few years to come, I will share some experiences with you. I can't say it now. Amen. Ephesians 6 verse 24. A very blessed scripture. Look at this scripture. Grace be with all those who love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity truly from your heart the bible says there is an allotment of grace blessed are those who love the lord sincerely sincerely love qualifies on that love for god your love for god qualifies you to enjoy god's best your love for God qualifies you to enjoy God's best. Romans 8.28 For we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and are the called according to his purpose. First Corinthians 2 verse 9 Eyes have not seen nor ears heard neither has it entered into the heart of any man. The things that God has prepared for who? For everybody? No. Only for those who love him he didn't say for christians <laughs> there are many christians there are many children of god that don't care about god they just want to use god as an errand boy he's a means to an end once i get married god we can see after the rapture yes or no you better say yes or <laughs> the bible says it is only for those who love god 
that things imagine imagine what those things are eyes have not seen ears have not heard even the heart cannot imagine imagine the glory that is prepared for those that love god let me even shock you more your love for god puts god in your service your love for god puts god in your service it makes god to serve you you don't believe me isaiah 64 verse 20 verse 4 isaiah 64 verse 4 your love for god puts god in your service you know what it means for someone to be at your service look at this scripture for since the beginning of the world men have not heard nor perceived by the ear nor has the eye seen any god besides you read from this point with me it's on the screen one two go who acts for the one who waits for him your love for god puts god in your service there are people that is like when they pray god is waiting for them to pray so that he can answer there are some people that the presence the grace of god everything about god is just so around their life it looks like god has favorites no no it is our love for god that separates us in the kingdom to a large extent even your receipt your, your, your receiving of mantles of graces you're being qualified to occupy certain uh, um, um intrical positions of authority and of service in the kingdom of god it's your love for god that separates me in fact in these last days majority of those that god will call and anoint and embrace are those who truly are lovers of god apostle joshua selman will always say something that there is a realm that fasting giants and prayer warriors cannot get to it is the realm for the lovers of god i want you to make up your mind to love god wholeheartedly so that even when god does not give you the job you are praying for it doesn't change anything so it was not about job it was not about wife or husband it was not about all of these things that will end on the earth your love for god keeps you intact and then it makes you a man and a woman of spiritual integrity god can trust you because he knows you are not following him for anything all we want is you take over take over still we are consumed by nothing nothing else but you your love for god number two love for the kingdom love for the kingdom the second expression of god's love in your heart and in your life is seen in your love for the kingdom jesus said in matthew 6 33 but seek ye first the kingdom of god seek ye first the kingdom of god and its righteousness the proof of your love for the kingdom is in your sacrificial service and zeal for his house your sacrificial service and zeal for the house of god is your proof is the proof of your love for the kingdom if you truly claim to love the kingdom of god we will see it in your service we will see it in your sacrifice we will see it in your zeal for god we will see it in how you inconvenience yourself to go all out to see that the name of god is glorified whether you are a preacher whether you work in the government whether you are a humanitarian you know or you know military or paramilitary personnel wherever god has placed you you are devoted to seeing that the kingdom of god advance the values of god's kingdom the character the culture the stakes of the kingdom of god everything about you is the kingdom of god including your resources you know why we beg people to give we manipulate people in church with words you have to quote this scripture quote that scripture join this realm and this realm. they don't love the kingdom of god that's why when a man loves the kingdom of god he goes beyond tithe and offering say god this part of my salary every month will be my contribution to your kingdom and just because you are not doing it doesn't mean there are not those who do it 
In fact, God on, on, on the last day, God will show some people, <laughs> thousands of other people who did what they grumbled of. You don't believe me. What did he tell Elijah? When Elijah said, God, take my life. They are looking for me to kill me. He said, I'm the only one left. God said, no, I have 7,000 others. In that place you ran from, they are there. They did not bow to bow. They did not kiss him. And yet they are still there in that city. They didn't run away. God, will, I pray you will not be among those people. May God not show me on the last day that this thing you grumbled about for 10 years, you couldn't do for me. May God not show me 2,000 other people who did it and they didn't even get a reward. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, these all died in faith, not receiving the promise, yet they confessed. How can you not receive and then you, the Bible says you died in faith? What, what, then what is faith? Because we think faith is all about receiving and getting from God. The Bible says people didn't receive anything and they died in faith. They stayed with faith in God. By his stripes, I am healed. By his stripes. And she died with cancer, with that confession. You, you are here, headache. You, you now put a chair in front of you. say, God, sit down, let's talk. How can I be having migraine for two years? I'm saying it again. May God not show you on the last day thousands others of people that did what you grumbled of in Jesus' name. Am I too hard on you? No, I'm helping us this night. Your love for the kingdom. Number three, your love for people. Your love for people. Second Corinthians 5 verse 14 to 20. Your love for people. It's a long reading. So we'll do it very quick. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. Please, from this point, give me in King James translation. From this point. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. That means you are not, this Christian race, you will not live for yourself. You will live for God and for others. But unto him which died for them and rose again. Go on. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man. There's somebody, God is just showing me somebody, you are right now, you are thinking it in your heart. You, there is a deal you are supposed to have with God. God spoke to you and told you a certain amount, something you were supposed to be doing for God. But right now, as I was saying what I was saying, you were pricked in your heart. And you are, you are still debating with God. Is it too late? And all of that. God says, go back to it. I can hear you are thinking it now in your heart. I can just hear you think. In fact, there are two of you. There's a guy and a lady. One is here. The other one is here. Let's continue. Yet now, henceforth. Okay, wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now, henceforth, know we him no more. In other words, you don't judge people by their physical looks, by their, their, what, their physical lives, their limitations in the natural. This is what redemption has done, and it was propelled by the love of God. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God. Who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and had given us, given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Hey, hey, hey. To wit that God <laughs> was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Sorry, I'm not making a show. I'm just, I can see people's thoughts. God is revealing the thoughts of people here to me. Not imputing their trespasses unto them and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Can you stand up? We are going to pray. I want you to pray prayer. God and God is talking to me now. No, stand up like soldiers now. Stand up. Don't stand. Up. I want us to pray in two minutes. I want us to ask the Lord for mercy. If there is anything that God had told you to do and you were not able to do it, which may have been a proof of your love for God. I want you to ask him for mercy in two minutes. 
Don't look at me. Pray. Ask him for mercy. Talk to him. I want to continue, but God is just stopping me. Is it an instruction? Is it an obedience that you were supposed to walk? to perform whatever it is whether in time past or now Lord I'm sorry for the, the betraying your trust in me I didn't know it was supposed to be a proof a test of my love for you or for people ask him for mercy please pray ask him for mercy My life is not my own To you I belong I give myself I give myself to you Please talk to him Just 30 more seconds My life is not my own To you I belong I give myself I give myself to you some of you God told you to wake up in the night to pray some of you God told you give me 50,000 some of you God told you take care of this family do this for this person do that for my kingdom for my house but it was too much for you can you say I'm sorry Lord can you repent before him And ask him to consume you with the love to do that which you ran away from. In Jesus' name. Please sit down. Sorry I had to interrupt us there. Go back to the scripture. Now and then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us. Go back to verse 19. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. This is love God is demonstrating. This is an example of love for people. He was reconciling them through Christ and not counting their trespasses. Remember when Jesus was on the cross, they mocked him. They insulted him. Some even said, come down and save yourself. Save yourself and save us. They didn't know that right there on the cross, God was reconciling men to him, even though they were still in their rebellion. This is the extent of love for people. That, see, we will know if you truly love people when you keep doing good for someone who is never grateful. That's too hard for some people. And God will make you do that. when I say people who are not grateful it doesn't mean that they didn't say thank you no one of the ways to be ungrateful is when somebody did something to help you without your asking then you went back to ask again he did again you ask again he did again you ask you are not grateful Can't, to be candid you are not grateful sometimes to register your gratefulness don't ask are you hearing what I'm saying sometimes one of the things I told God when we started this ministry I told God that as a pastor I will not be a pastor that exploits his members I told God I don't, I don't want to ask for anything whatever they give me let it be as a result of their love for me and a reward for the, whatever you have been doing through me in their lives even though there is the right to ask, isn't it? Yes. Verse 20 now, let's finish it. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. This chapter illustrates love for people. First John chapter 3, verse 16 to 18, another scripture more interestingly you find in this scripture hereby perceive we know you can go back to new king james by this we know love because he laid down his life for us and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren 
But whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? Verse 18, my little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. This is love for people. When you walk in these three expressions of love, you will step into the dominion possibility of the kingdom of God that love can open for you. One of the reasons why your love for people will cause you to walk in dominion is because your love for people builds and commands your influence over them. Love will always make you demonstrate something for them. So, when people see your love for them because of the things you do for them, unknown to you, your influence over them is growing. Is that true? Very true. That means that if God calls you into ministry, don't think by only prayer and prophecy, you'll be able to keep the people God sends to you. No. Demonstration of love. If they know that you love them, that's the reason why after service I will stand here and see everybody, including those that wait for me at the door till we go home. As tired as I am, it's a heart of love for the people. That's why I'm here. The reason why I am relevant to God and to humanity now is for people. Now, there is no way you will not, people will not have or you will not have genuine influence over people when you don't demonstrate practical love for them. And dominion, to a large extent, is influence. Uncultured and uncontrolled influence. No limitations. There are many of you here that people around you have gotten jobs maybe because of a good thing that your parents did for somebody years ago. Many of you here have gotten admission or have gotten one favor or the other because somebody was a recipient of the love from your parents or from somebody around you and they kept it in their heart many years later. You came and they saw your son name. Minor. Which minor? Where are you from? Say from so so. Ah! Just come like this, come like this. Now the question I have for you is you, you now, you now. What will you sow? What amount of love will you give for the generations unborn to enjoy? When you love people, don't be judgmental on people. Don't be judgmental on people. Don't be. There's no perfection in this earth. Let me just tell you. The only perfection on earth is in the four letter word love L O V E. This is a corrupt earth. This is a fallen world. Everything in the world, the Bible says, is passing away. So don't expect to meet perfect people. Some of us, we are good. It's just that we always want people to behave in a perfect way and not make mistakes before we can love them. No, 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 no perfection is not in the character of the individual you are relating with perfection is in the love of christ being freely expressed to you if love is not shown to humanity there is no way this world can be healed so god will bring many of the people that will come around you don't expect that they are perfect every man has issues including the one that is talking to you here me i have issues too some of you look at me from a distance. Oh, I just love apostle. Come and live with me first. Amen. So don't be judgmental on people. Love for people who are around that sometimes when they do the wrong thing, it's not every time you correct them. And it's not every time you correct instantly. No. Sometimes just smile. Sometimes just laugh over it and continue. It pain you, I know. But the Bible says love covers a multitude of sin. God did not send perfect people to David. The Bible says, God, look at the kind of people God sent to him. He said men who were in debt, men who were tired of life, men who were depressed. That means some days David will go and see one trying to hang himself. I said, well, what are you doing? But many years later, they became the mighty men of David. 
And because they knew that this man loved us when we were nothing. There was a time when David was in battle with the Israelites. He was getting old. And a, a, a brother to Goliath. You know, he killed Goliath many years ago in his youth. You know, some enemies. Ah, some enemies, some battles you face are, are, are reprisal attacks from the past. This brother of Goliath came many years later and said, you kill my brother, I'll kill you. And the Bible says, David grew faint. Second Samuel 21 verse 3. But there was a man called Abishai. He stepped forward and he defended David and killed Goliath. And look at what they told David. They say, you will not go to battle again. Say, they kill all of us. They don't mind. Nothing, there's no problem. He said, but you are worth 10,000 of us. That's a language of love. You don't end that one, eh? You don't receive it as a gift, as a birthday gift or as a wish. You receive it by earning it. It is your love, your constant love of people. Some of you, God will raise you to mentor people. Some of us, single ladies, little issue with your friends. You are always shouting. You are always fighting with them. You will not talk to them for three days. And yet, these are friends that have stood with you. They know your secrets and they still stand with you. They know all the nonsense you did in the past, but they are still with you. If you cannot forbear with these ones, how will you forbear when you have your own children? You want to be a leader. You must love people. You must love people. <laughs> there are many times I've prayed for. There are many people I've prayed for. I've fasted for. And God answered them and they forgot about me. And I still love them. Are you hearing me? Those of you that are pastors or ministers, let me talk to you. You go see this one well, well. You, you will think that because you prayed for them, they will now come and sow a seed. The seed they will sow is ignore you. And God will allow it sometimes so that you will know that it is not of him that will it, nor him that run it. It is of God that showed mercy. Your source is from God, not people. I fasted, I prayed, I was the one who prophesied and now they are in the government house calm down, calm down, I've gone through it many times I've had people I've prayed for, even gave vows hundreds of thousands for they didn't know, and where God answered them and gave them everything, they ran away you think some of these testimonies you hear here you think they just came because you prayed here do you know the sacrifices in, behind there are some meetings you, you are to go for God to say, empty your account. Wait, 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 empty account for what? Let me just go and preach. You move there. God say, no, empty your account. Sow a seed so that my glory can come. And that's the service that when you live there, they tell you, bless you. God bless you with bottled water and malt. See, if, you, if love is not your motive, you can't do ministry. Let me tell you. Let me not give you I'll, many years to come. I'll give you some stories. Let's end it on this note. John chapter 13, verse 34 to 35. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. In two minutes, can you pray in your seated position and say, Lord, let the fire of your love come alive in my heart some of you have been betrayed some of you have been abused by other people people have taken you for granted people have not appreciated the things you've done and then you've decided not to love people again but god wants to rekindle that fire can you pray in your seated position lord stir up that fire of love inside of me again love is the greatest force it conquers all it conquers the pains of the past it conquers the hatred it conquers the bitterness that you nurse towards people who offended you people whom you helped and they did not come back to say thank you people who you lifted and when it was their turn to help you they turned against you can you pray can you pray in your seated position lord stir up some of you as you pray god is purging you of pains inside of you grief that has been caused by people round and about you please pray it is his will that every need be supplied you are important to me I need you to survive I pray 
for you, you pray for me, I love you, I need you so alive, I won't harm you, with words from my mouth, I love you, I need you to I pray for you one more time. I pray one more time you. say you pray for me that's the character of love that's the I fire that God is rekindled in your heart I will tell you with words from my mouth I love you I need you to survive you are in your neighbor let's sing that part together you are important to me I need you to survive one more time sing you are important to me I need you to survive I want you to do something stand up from where you are and just hug the person near you and tell them I love you. And tell them I love you with the love of God. Tell them I love you with God's love. I'm sorry if I've offended you before. I'm sorry if I've taken you for granted. From today I treat you as God's most precious treasure in my life. I need you to survive. I pray for you, you pray for me, I love you, I need you to survive, I won't have you, with words from my mouth, I love you, I need you to survive. Listen to me, listen to me. We need the love of God to be restored first in the church. In the church. The very house of love. Too many backbiting, mildness, hatred. Just because your sister wore a new dress to church is a problem. Listen. Bring it down. Listen, let me tell you. Don't just think when we get to heaven we'll become automatically perfect. No. It's the things you practice here that you will continue in heaven. When your brother is testifying, he got a job, and you, you have been without a job for six months. Rejoice with them. Celebrate with them. Jesus said, rejoice with those that are rejoicing. And mourn with those that are mourning. So he said, me, I don't, I don't know how to go greet people who lost somebody. I don't, I don't know how to mourn and cry. The Bible says there is joy in the presence of the Lord. You don't know love then. Before Jesus raised Lazarus, he wept with them. He wept with them first. And why do I why do I think that it was his love expressed in that way that brought Lazarus back? If you don't believe me, there was a woman called Dorcas. She died. They sent for Peter. When Peter came, they didn't tell him Dorcas had died. They just brought all the people she had done good for. And they started showing him what, what they had, what they had done. Peter was provoked with love. He went into the room and shut the door and he knelt down and prayed. God, you must be. We need people of love again, I'm telling you. People that will love you not because of anything you do for them. Not because of who you are. They just love you. Pray before you sit down. I want you to pray and say, Lord, send people around me that will love me unconditionally. And as you are praying it, make sure you become one as such. That you will love those that God have brought around you unconditionally. See the way you are praying. <laughs> if I ask you to pray for those who hate you, I, I hope you, you will be louder than this. Pray and say, Lord, send those around me who will love me unconditionally. I know I'm not perfect. I know I have issues. Sometimes I can be a pain. But Lord send men and women of love around me 
some of you are in offices where everybody hates you nobody likes you genuinely can you pray and say lord send men and women of love around me in jesus name i think we can stop here i wanted to take another system should we stop or should we continue huh are you blessed so far okay sit down let's take let's take the last one number four was love number five number five is sacrifice systems of dominion I pray to the Lord before coming that when I teach about sacrifice I will not teach it with ulterior motives I will not teach it with segregation but brothers and sisters i want to show you one powerful system in the kingdom of god if you understand it your life will be a wonder to even witches and wizards i want to show you what can make you great at a young age are you ready please pray for one minute lord open my eyes Open my eyes, open my ears, and I will understand that the Lord is good. So open my eyes, open my ears, and I will understand. That the Lord is here. Hallelujah. May God grant us grace to see tonight. Revelations 5 verse 12. I want to start this teaching with something very, very, very powerful that I discovered. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb. Who is the Lamb? Who is the Lamb? The Lamb of God is Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb who was what? Slain. Why? To receive, count it, power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. To receive all of this. Why? Because he was slain. Sacrifice. Sacrifice makes you worthy. <laughs> Listen, his mandate was to die for the sins of mankind. That was all. That man be redeemed back to God. But so worthy was his sacrifice and so great that it even qualified him to receive all of these blessings. Even though he was God, he earned it by sacrifice. Revelation 13 verse 8. You know, I'm starting with the New Testament so that you will not tell me mm, sacrifice in the Old Testament. There's no time to argue with those people again. Let's start from the New Testament now. All who dwell on, on the earth will worship him. Speaking of the beast now. Whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from where? The foundation of the world. That means before the world was created, Jesus was sacrificed. The foundations of the earth, of the world, is on his sacrifice. That means your redemption was planned even before you were created. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. And the Bible says he was slain from the foundations of the world. Meaning that this was already a reality in the spirit realm. In eternity, it was already a reality before he came to time to fulfill it. 
the question is why will god erect as a pillar the foundation of the world on the sacrifice of jesus you go home and ask yourself that question if the earth was built on the foundation of the sacrifice of the lamb that means it will take sacrifice to tap into any good that the earth possesses is somebody catching something this night i i don't i'm not going to teach with with sentiment i'm look i'm not i'm not that pastor that will tell you all of these things because i want to exploit you no i will show you what i know is the truth if the foundation of our redemption and our faith was laid on sacrifice then it means everything that we will do and build on that faith will follow the protocol of sacrifice if you were saved on the platform of sacrifice to you it was by faith but someone paid the price if your salvation and your faith was founded on sacrifice it means everything you will do now that you have this precious faith will follow that protocol it will always follow that protocol romans 1 verse 16 to 17 for i'm not ashamed of the gospel of christ for it is the power of god unto salvation to those who believe to jews first and then to the greeks also he said for the righteousness of god is revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith from faith to faith so you were saved by faith your journey will be by faith habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 is still you know but trusting on this same scripture behold the proud his soul is not upright in him but the just shall live by what his faith not on another person's faith they know they share faith the just shall live by his faith if your faith was founded on sacrifice then the protocol of your journey from faith to faith as a believer will always go through sacrifice so to rise the higher you rise the more the demands that will be on you lazy men will not rise in the kingdom of god and in the kingdom of satan that's a common denominator because the, mo the motif of a lazy man is selfishness he loves himself too much self-preservation that's why you want to experience god you want to explore the dimensions of god some of you want to understand and walk in the power of god it doesn't come cheap let me tell you there's a price the price jesus paid was for your salvation he didn't pay the price for you to live acting on the price he paid you will keep paying daily prices to live and fulfill destiny psalms 50 verse 5 gather my children right my people to me my saints together <laughs> my saints who is a saint here gather my saints together to me then this is the qualification the prerequisite this is their cv those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice first of all what is a covenant a covenant is an agreement bonding two entities so two those two entities have a role to play even though there is a lesser and a higher one but the two of them have roles to play by reason of that agreement now we have a covenant with god in christ jesus we have been saved but listen to me that covenant is sustained and enforced by sacrifice why did paul say henceforth let no man trouble me for i bear in my bodies the marks that means jesus didn't die for me me too i have experienced the fellowship of his suffering my life is a witness my life has been given just to show and express the extent to the sacrifice he made on the cross he said for that reason no man is permitted to do me harm let me tell you the truth eh? there is a preserving power that sacrifice carries huh? that nothing else can give you 
Just because you are anointed doesn't mean that evil cannot befall you. I agree with you. Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. But in 2 Samuel 1 verse 12, David said, Why was this the shield of Saul cast on the mountains of Gilboa as though he was not anointed? Even the anointed can fall. In the day of adversity, when even the anointed fall, what do you have to stand? You are married now with a wife and a child. What is the foundations of your marriage? You answer me and tell me it's God. If it is God, then I will see a track record and a pattern of sacrifice. It will be a mark that God will have with you. Remember the two spies and Rahab. Rahab said, I save your life. You must promise me that when you come to take over Jericho, my family will be spared. They say, okay, we can promise you that on one condition. This rope that you use to let us down and save our life. Let this rope be hanging on your window the day we come to take Jericho. And funny enough, the rope, the rope was a red color. And that woman was a, an, an ancestor of Jesus Christ who shed his blood. Blood, what color is blood? So if she had removed the rope because she felt, eh, you know, I saved their life, so they, they more, you know what would have happened? They would have all died. So sometimes for God to walk with a man, there is a God is a God of patterns. I think I need we need to teach that. Okay, next month, deliverance series. The part one is about patterns. God is a God of patterns. That's how spirit operates. Patterns are tailor-made events. You will see that even though generation changes, but God does the same thing in every generation. There are patterns he leaves with men that will walk with him in every generation. So when you start something with God and you see God pushing you towards the place of sacrifice, it's not because God needs anything that you will do. No. It's because he wants to create a pattern. He said, for when I see the blood, I will pass over sacrifice. So that on the strength of this pattern, even the spirits of darkness will know that they don't come close to you because you are my property. A covenant of sacrifice. The Bible tells us in Second Chronicles chapter one, verse six to seven, and First Kings chapter three, verse five, three to five, about Solomon. Give us the First Kings three, verse three to five. The reason why I quoted First Chronicles was because he was he was just anointed king, and the first thing he did was what you find in First Kings here. The Bible says Solomon loved the Lord. Verse four now. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. And Solomon offered a thousand bond offerings on that altar. First of all, it was love that propelled Solomon to make that sacrifice. Now look at this, watch this. Solomon was just anointed king. Historically, it was proven that Solomon was the dullest of all his father's children. Historically speaking. It's not in your Bible, but historically speaking. That's the reason why he asked God for wisdom. Because Solomon was born in David's old age. So his mother pampered him. That was why Adonijah was angry when they anointed Solomon. He felt he was older, he was better, he was wiser. This small child. That was the reason why when God appeared to Solomon, Solomon told me, he told him, he said, you know I'm a child. I don't have any advantage. Brothers and sisters, when you don't have a natural advantage to mark with your colleagues, sacrifice can distinguish you. A man is just anointed king. Listen, before, shortly before David died and he was anointed king, they were already preparing for the building of the temple project. And they were saving a lot of money and a lot of resources for it. Here comes a new king and the first thing he does is sacrifice 1,000 bulls. Do you know what it means? To, how much is a bull now? If you see a bull for 500,000, not a cow, a bull. If you see a bull for 500,000, you got it cheap. And one person cannot kill a bull. You need like three or four people. And you will pay them for their work. So the sacrifice was not just the bulls. The people he paid, the, the priest he paid to kill it. I did one calculation while I was studying this thing and I discovered that he spent close to 400 million dollars in today's money 
uh, one day I will bring the calculation and show you. Are you crazy? But the Bible told us it was propelled by love. He did it before God. And God came to him and said, Ask what you want. My question to you is, how many times did God say that in the Bible? Even David, his father that loved God so much, God said, David is the man after my heart. God never went to David and said, Ask what you want. God came to a small boy that doesn't know anything. He said, Ask what you want. You know why he came to a small boy? Because when a small boy has learned to wash his hands, as our elders say, he will eat with elders. He's a small boy, but he's doing the feet of old men. So let me tell you, some of you are here, my spiritual father calls it young ancient. Some of you may be young in age, but the things that the spirit of God moves you to do, old people cannot do it. So in the realm, you are young physically, but in the realm of the spirit, you are a giant. You are ancient. You can be anointed, but let me tell you the truth. You can distinguish between the anointing upon a man's life maybe because he was called and the anointing upon a man's life that is fueled and sponsored by sacrifice there is a dimension of divine favor that you will not even you you will say god is partial for this one the covenant of sacrifice and look at what god told him when he asked for wisdom god said because you didn't ask for riches that means you can ask for riches you didn't ask for long life or for your enemies. You say you ask for wisdom. I will give you wisdom and an understanding heart. More than all the kings before you and after you. He said, and I will also give you riches. Because this your sacrifice cannot go unnoticed. How do you go back and how do you pay back the, the treasury? The national treasury where you took this money from? There's a governor in Nigeria that somebody told me. A very, a very dear man of God to me told me of this governor that any time if any man of God goes to meet him as far as you're a man of God the least they, he will give you is 8 million go and this governor is a very vocal governor he has many enemies but he has not died why? sacrifice you know who I'm talking about huh? so keep it to yourself are you hearing what I'm telling you? I am showing you the precedence for your business for your career I'm showing you the precedence for your ministry till Jesus come sacrifice is part of this ministry till Jesus come me I've been donated to God you understand so if I've been donated to God my brother told you last day if I, everything I, that's, that's how I will be doing it till Jesus come Let me show you a few things that sacrifice does. Number one, sacrifice commits God to a cause and to a venture. Sacrifice commits God to a cause and to a venture. And when I talk about sacrifice, I'm not just talking about what you give with your hands. The first sacrifice is you, you. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and in all your ways acknowledge Him. So sacrifice is not just material things. It is a heart and a life that is totally devoted to Him. Sacrifice commits God to a cause. Jonah chapter 2 verse 9 to 10. I want to show you that I believe that the fish did not vomit Jonah because just because God had mercy on him. There was something Jonah did that brought him out of that place. Because anytime you go against the will of God, eh, you are broken away from God's divine protection. You can die at that point. God is not obligated to redeem you at that point because you have gone beyond his jurisdiction. And if he does, he will, he will be breaking his law as the God of justice. Do you understand what I'm saying? Jonah had already gone away from the will of God. Go to Nineveh. He went the opposite direction to Tarsus. And a fish swallowed him. Let me ask you a question. How many people survive in the belly of an animal? Do you know all the acids and the enzymes in the digestive system of an animal? 
and that Jonah was not digested in three days and three nights. He was still talking inside there. Let me tell you what brought Jonah out. Look at verse 9. But I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay what I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Next verse. And God spoke to the fish and he vomited him out. The moment Jonah made a vow of sacrifice, God told the fish, vomit him out. There are things that God doesn't despise. You think God, the, the fish vomited him because he was only a prophet. There were other righteous prophets that died. And God didn't do anything about them. They died. But while in the belly of the fish, some of you, your life now, or your family, they are like in the similitude of Jonah, in the belly of a fish. Right there, he made a vow. He said, God, I know at this point, if I die, you are not to be blamed. He made a vow to God. He said, I will offer my sacrifice. And God said, yeah, vomit him. The Bible spoke about a man called Elkanah in 1 Samuel chapter 1. The, wife, the husband of uh, 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 Hannah. Now it is important that when you read that chapter, you realize that the Bible says every year, Elkanah will go to Shiloh, where the temple of God was, and offer sacrifice every year. That means it was a covenant he had. They didn't force him. Not all, all Israelites were doing like that. He had a covenant with God. He had a vow. There was something he was keeping with God. Gather to me my saints. Those who have made a covenant of sacrifice with me. No wonder. Penina, the first wife, had children. But Hannah didn't have a child. Till the day Anna decided to do what her husband did. She went to God and said, if you give me a son, I will give him back to you. God said, now you are talking, you behave like your husband. She went back and God gave her Samuel. She brought Samuel. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 2, that God gave her five more other children. I see people these days looking for children, looking for certain things, and they don't understand how to use this law. I know somebody say, hey, but Apostle, I've done it. Wait, allow me to land. Let me continue. Sacrifice commits God to a cause. Number two, sacrifice is required for every believer. Okay, just note this. This is not number two. All right, yeah, number two. Sacrifice is required from every believer. Sacrifice is required from every believer. However, it seems to be demanded from just a few. Let me say it again. Sacrifice is required from every believer. However, it seemed to be demanded from just a few. It seems to be demanded from just a few. It is required from every believer, especially when you understand priesthood. Yet, God will only demand it from a few. Why? Because it's not everybody God can trust. There are people that don't have mind. They don't have weight. God can't... <laughs> The Bible says in Romans 12 verse 1, I beseech you dearly beloved that you offer yourself as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable. That means the only thing you can do that makes sense to God and you call it service is when your life is sacrificially devoted to Him. Your life first. We will now see it in the place of prayer. In the place of your time with God. Do you prioritize time with God? Can you do anything to have time with God? They gave you leave from your office. Can you take your money and go to a hotel in another city and shut yourself for three days just because you want to stay in his presence? That in itself is sacrifice. Oh. No, your money is not good for that one. It's good for ice cream. Let me go to Abuja and drink ice cream. No problem. You are still a child of God. Oh, but God cannot do serious business with you. Luke chapter 9 verse 23 to 24. Quickly please, look at this. Then he said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, if anyone, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Go on. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. So in the kingdom, you gain by losing Go to verse 23. Let me show you something. 
there, there is a trapatite activity of sacrifice in this verse 23. What is required of every man that must follow God and walk with God. He says, if anyone desires to come after me, look at this, let him deny himself. That is the sacrifice of self first. That is death to self. And take up his cross daily. A cross symbolizes death. Are you, are you, are you hearing me? A cross symbolizes death. So when the Bible is saying take up your cross daily, it's saying die to the flesh. Because when Jesus hung on the cross, it was his flesh that was pierced. So God is saying deny yourself, deny your flesh, and take up your cross and follow. Deny yourself, meaning sacrifice of the soul. Deny your flesh, sacrifice of the body. Take up your cross. This is now the spiritual dimension now. And follow me. The reason why many people struggle with sin is because many believers struggle with sin is because they don't know, they've forgotten this principle that the Bible says you take up your cross daily, daily, daily. That means the battle against the flesh is a daily thing. The victory, you can't have it for one week. It's not an airtime you can subscription, DSTV, subscribe for one month. No, it's a daily thing. After today, you have won, thank God. But from tomorrow as you wake up, you have to be determined to live for God. That is a sacrifice. And then you take that cross by denying your flesh. There are things your flesh wants that is opposite and anti to the will of God. You have to deny the flesh. Paul said all things are lawful for me, but not all things are expedient. You see a man say, hey, when, a man come and meet you. God told him to fast. Now he's so tempted by the food, he now come and meet you. Say, eh, if I drink juice in the morning, did I break my fast? He, he say, when you hear those kind of questions, he, he wants to compromise. He's looking for a, a, a justifiable reason to compromise. When you come and meet me, I say, no, yes, no. I'll just give you that kind of answer. A sacrifice that helps you live above sin. Your victory over sin is maintained by sacrifice. Sacrifice number three is the requirement for a sustainable, a sustainable, sorry, is a requirement for sustainable success and for a glorious destiny. Sacrifice is the requirement for sustainable success and for a glorious destiny. People are not intelligent or people don't pass the exam just because they are intelligent from God say ah this guy you are blessed your mind you know they read I remember when I was in secondary school there was a doctor you know he has a foundation he used to go outreach to secondary schools so he came one time and was giving us a story he said he was an unserious student till he was in SS2 at SS2 he could not write well so but God encountered him and he decided to be serious with his academics. Then he went to the person who was always coming first in their class. And he asked him, he said, what do you do that makes you the first from GS1 till now? The guy said, okay, on so-so day, meet me at the assembly ground. So he went there that morning, sunny day, met the friend at the assembly ground. The friend said, you are welcome, sit down. He sat down. He saw the friend with books. He said, they sat down there one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours five hours eight hours they were there he grumbled and left then he met the friend another day he said is this, this is how you punish yourself he said that's the price to come in first from gs1 to ss2 there is no success today that is not fueled by sacrifice let me there's nothing like luck luck was invented by that is a lazy man's excuse for success luck that's the definition. It's a lazy man's excuse for success. Success is predetermined and predicted. If you must have a glorious destiny, if you must sustain success, sustain dominion, it has to be by sacrifice. So you were praying. Now God has anointed you. You feel you don't have to pray again. You were praying when you have touch light phone. God blessed you. Now you have iPhone. Instead of you to continue praying before you go for that ministration, you are on iPhone. You are checking your Instagram. Now you have a phone, you can snap picture. But now it's about your face on Instagram. You have forgotten what took you to that point. You are going right back there. 
just a matter of time. Cut a branch from a tree, it still looks fresh. Give it time. I thought when we started this work, I thought that you will pray to a point. So in fact, somebody deceived me and told me there's a point you get to you not pray like that again. You just rest and come out. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Five years later, that statement is a lie from the pit of hell. In fact, I don't know if there's a day I can stop praying. People tell me rest. And let me just tell you, it's not like I don't like to rest. But you need to wear my shoes. I just finished preparing for service today. For us to start coming, I put on my phone. Somebody texted me from another, another state. Crisis. Headache. They were taking her to the hospital. And that's the kind of text messages I get every day. And you want to live that kind of life without praying. You know, people. what people like is that chair. You see that chair, fine chair. The Jews, the suit and everything. Some of these things, I don't enjoy them all. All through the weekend, we had programs back to back. I don't think I was sleeping in the night. Throughout Friday night, I didn't sleep. We went for breakfast prayer yesterday. We came back. I just slept about an hour or so in the afternoon. Finished praying, you know, preparing for the next meeting in the evening. We finished that meeting. Came back home. I was on call for almost two hours praying for this person from here. Praying for that. See food in front of me. Praying for this person from this place. Praying for that person. Praying for this person. Prophesy. Straining your hungry body to see in the spirit. By the time you, I was done doing that, there was no appetite to eat. Then I remembered I had a son in Abuja whose birthday was yesterday. A senior military officer. I had to call him. We were talking till past 11. The sleep left. And then continued like that praying till morning. There is no success in the kingdom that can be sustained outside that. Never. Never. God will look at the level of your sacrifice and determine what he can entrust to you. To whom much is given, much is expected from. No, now somebody is hearing me and say, Ah, if not like that ministry, there are no go do. Please do. You are welcome. I'm, I've been praying for you. It's you I'm praying for. The work is too much. That's why you need to come and help. <laughs> Jesus said, Pray that the Lord of harvest will send what laborers. I'm praying for you. Please come and join us. Some of you are prophets. You are even more anointed in the prophetic than me. But it's because you have refused to rise. That's the reason why God is pushing us. We have to occupy different... When you see a man occupying different offices, is it because God just likes him? No. It's because people are not yielded. One time, Ketrukuma said, God told, the Holy Spirit told her, that what you are doing is the work of seven men of God together that refused to answer the call. And the woman answered it. Today, Slay Queen is now a calling. Some ladies don't want to even hear that their husband has anything pertaining to call because they just feel ministry is a life of suffering. They just want to be at ease and enjoy. You will go to heaven and there will be no crown on your head. And on earth, your life will not be marked around people that made impact and were relevant in their generation. Look at Dr. Miles Moro of Blessed Memory. How many years now he's dead? Till today, his messages are more relevant than some men of God that are alive, including the one that is talking. One time, I was watching him preaching to his people at the beginning of the year, and he was talking to them about the importance of fasting. And he told them, He said, You think I do this thing? That you, you, some of you see what's happening with me, and you think it just comes by sheer luck. He told them, he said, this is two weeks without food, just water. He was preaching. Then he opened the suit and showed them and closed it back. He said, I have to remain in this state at different points of the year because presidents are advised by me. What you say to, to determine the progress of an entire nation, then you think you will get it on Eba. You sit down and just keep eating. Well done. I think we should just pray now. When we started this ministry years ago, you know, very few of them, many of them don't know, but you know, I had to stop because doctors kept talking to me again and again. 
there are services, some miracle service that I come 48, 72 hours, no food. Come for service. Because you know that people will gather from different places and they need God. Your calling and the name of God is on at stake. There are some of those services that you lock yourself for 48 hours. You don't make any call. You don't receive any call. No text message. Your phone is off. The only time your mouth is opening, you are speaking in tongues. You are talking to spirits. And that kind of person will come on stage and a witch can fire him arrow. They no bond that witch. They no bond that witch well. I'm saying it by the grace of God. If, even if you go to your village, rent them and bring them. <laughs> they know who is who. My spiritual father, one of the things I learned from him, the sacrifice towards ministry. When we started family worship many years ago, I remember those days when we finish on Friday in Kefi like that, on Saturday morning when we leave him and we go back to Massacre. As we are going out of his house, he's shutting his door. That door will not open till the next Friday. Till the next Friday. Look at him now, he's looking fat and fresh and all. <laughs> no, I know where he's coming from. This is one man that till tomorrow, if he say, Jonathan, follow me, let's go and pray. I'll say, no, sir. Pray. I'll wait here. No. Till tomorrow. I think I can just pray here. So you want to see sustainable results. You want to walk in dominion. Brothers and sisters, it must be it, the, the sacrifice equation must not be tampered with he said that those who live he died that those who live will not live for themselves that's what we read sacrifice of prayer sacrifice of fasting sacrifice of studying the word hmm. there was a time when I would sit down like this from 9am to 4pm with just a jar of water I'm telling you the truth by the message of God by the message of God on the Bible opening different translations that, that time I ate I could quote scriptures from different translations those years so when I come it's easy now to prepare a message God can speak to me and in 15 minutes I just draft everything because everything is inside of me years upon years of investing on the word now you say you are called a preacher you don't have time for the Bible. To sit for one hour and read the Bible is a problem. I pity those who follow that kind of an individual. Even the prophetic, there is a dimension of the word of God you need to have for you to operate in the prophetic. Because sometimes God will not show you the things like we say it. Sometimes you will look at a person and a scripture will be written on their head. It is the wisdom and the understanding you have from scripture you use to decode the truths in the person's life. Those of you in prophetic school, you saw an example of that. A sacrifice. And you must be committed if you must do anything for God and for this generation. If you must be a blessing, it will be equal to your sacrifice. This night, God is calling people out of self. Away from self. To a life that pleases Him. Sacrifice is the greatest proof of love. John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave John 15 verse 13 greater love has no man than this than a man should lay down his life it's the greatest proof of love sacrifice is a formidable defense against adversary a formidable defense against adversary against the enemy Let me share this testimony and we'll pray. I'll, we can continue the rest. Apostle John C. Suleiman said this one time. I was watch, listening to his message. He said one time God told him he traveled to a state and an elderly man of God was praying for him. And God told him, give this man 100,000 every month till he, he dies till he dies John C. Suleiman started interviewing the man say how old are you the man says 75 say 
How long do people stay live long in your house? How long do people live in your? The man says sometimes we live to ninety something, and he say ah. So hear this testimony. So he started. Well, God has spoken. That's a sacrifice. God has spoken. So every month hundred thousand. Sometimes he will pay him for six months at once. Sometimes he will give him for one year, one point two. Then a time came. One day he was praying for a business couple. And while he was praying for them, the man just jumped up and shouted. He said, ah, what's the problem? The man said, Apostle, I heard God. I heard God. He said, what did God say? He said, God said, I should give you one million every month till you die. <laughs> Apostle said, you heard God. Who? <laughs> then, the man asked Apostle, he said, how long do people live in your... <laughs> Apostle said, we live to 125. <laughs> Amen. He said one time, God told him to give, he was praying one time, God told him, give 32,000 US dollars. He called his banker, I said, can I get this amount from you? The banker said, yes. 32,000 US dollars. I know what it means to, well, if, and he took the money and gave. One day, he said this with his own mouth. He was driving. In fact, the teaching, he was teaching them how to provoke favor. And he said one of the keys is sacrifice. He said they were driving one day. He was sitting with a police oddly at the back of the car. And then another vehicle double-crossed them and they stopped. When the vehicle opened its doors, assassins came down with guns. He said the police oddly was telling him, he said, Oh, God, now na- die with day to day. Now die with day to day. They told the police or they come down. He came down, lie down. They told him to come down. He said no. They say, sir, we don't want to rough handle you. Come down. He says it's not coming down. They opened the door. They say, come down. He came down. He was just looking at them. And then all of a sudden, while they were just, you know, giving him last words and all of that, one of them just looked at him and said, ah, bad market. Bad market. Then he walked up to Apostle. He said, Sir, you don't know me. He said, I don't know you. He said, Sir, I met you at the airport so so time. When I met you, I told you I was a student of Udime. I don't have fees. You asked me for proof. I gave you my ID card. You gave me money for my school fees and even extra. And you told me, you gave me your number. I said, if I need anything, I should call you. Then the guy turned and looked at his fellow assassins. He said, This one will know Okila. They say, For what? We have been paid. He said, Now me bring the job, come. This one, oh no, killer. That was how the man of God entered his car and drove off. $32,000 is big money, but not to be compared with life. In this wicked world that you are living, if you don't have an altar of sacrifice speaking for you, you can die like a chicken. For every demon you cast out of a person, the kingdom of darkness plans you. For every time you give to help those in need, the kingdom of darkness are looking for you. You need a system that barricades you. Job's system was sacrifice. The Bible says, after every morning, he will gather his children and offer sacrifices for them. But have venture if they have sinned against God. Satan identifies it is because you put a barricade around his life. There are crazy things God has told me to do that I can't even share here. The ones I've shared are the little ones that you can handle. I told somebody, I said, if 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 so so amount can buy a car, maybe we would have bought like three or four last year. I'm giving up. I think we should pray. Hear this before we pray. In First Kings 18, God sent rain again. The Bible says Elijah prayed. And at the seventh time, he saw a cloud like the size of a man's hand. And the Bible told us in James that it was because he prayed earnestly. But can I show you that it was not just prayer that Elijah did. Elijah offered a sacrifice to God. I will show you. The Bible says he gathered the 450 prophets of Baal to Mount Carmel, right? He gave them a challenge. 
let call down fire. I will call down fire. Whoever which God answers by fire, let him be God. They did everything they could. Now remember, Baal in those days was a god of fire. Yes, Baal was a god of fire. So you can imagine the challenge. And the god of fire could not answer by fire. The Bible says, at the time of the evening sacrifice, Elijah repaired the altar. And he offered a sacrifice on it. This was the sacrifice for the rain that came. Elijah told them, look for that verse for us. He told them to get water. They got water. And the Bible says the water was like a measure of seed, 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 seed. And he poured the water. He poured it four times till the water filled the sacrifice and the, the trench they dug around. And he called upon God. The Bible says fire came and consumed it and licked up the water. When fire meets with water, what happens? Evaporation. It went up to God as a sweet smelling savor. That was why when Elijah prayed, rain came again. Stand up, let's pray. So you want divine visitation? Then you should understand the place of sacrifice. Hear me before we pray. Certain foundational problems in some families will not just go by prayer alone. By prayer alone, you can't exterminate all the wickedness in your father's house because they have been killing people and offering blood to powers of darkness generations before you were born. Who told you just because you prayed in Jesus' name, it will be undone? That doesn't match the justice system of heaven. God will need a priest that will arise there that will combine prayer and sacrifice continually. For some of you that have done it once and you've not seen anything, I came to encourage you. There is what I call consistent sacrifice that provokes heaven. Every year, Elkanah kept offering the sacrifice even though Hannah didn't have a child. Every year. Every year. He continued. Every year. I've seen witchcraft in families. I've seen, you know this poverty thing, this poverty thing, eh? It can be a foundational problem in a family. Some families that are experiencing poverty now, with all due respect, if you can go back and research, you will see that it has been a problem in that family generations before you. That no matter what anybody does, they will still remain poor. There are people that come from families where people have gone from the village to Lagos, to Abuja, got federal government appointment. When they retired after 35 years of civil service, where did they go back to? The village. I know a man, listen to me, listen. I know a man, I won't tell you where I know that man from. I know a man who retired as a bank manager, who worked in the bank for over 30 years. And now, his brothers have to give him to eat. Meanwhile, the Bible says you shall not labor in vain, neither bring forth for trouble. There are powers fighting. And if you must rise above and experience dominion, there are certain things you will have to do. Nobody should tell you. All of these Freemason guys that we see, celebrities, at 35, is one of the wealthiest men in the world. At 30, at 28, you think it's ordinary? The sacrifice is both physical and spiritual. Some of them have sold their soul to the devil. They sold eternity for cash. Ask Yahoo people. I saw something online recently, uh, it was last year, of a Yahoo boy that they said, they gave him, he went to do Yahoo Plus, you know. And they gave him 8 billion. The Juju gave him 8 billion and said, spend it in just two years and after that you will die. It's only believers. When it comes to the mandate of God for your life, when it comes to the advancement of the kingdom, when it comes to doing what God has called you to do, you find believers still struggling. That's the reason why God does not seem to commit heavy kingdom resources to believers. Because the virtue of sacrifice that should distinguish us is not there. God gave you only two people in that, in that prayer band or that prayer department. You can't fast and pray at least once in a week for them. And yet you are, you are dreaming of a ministry of 1,000 people or 500 people. So you eat sermon on them. Want to pray this day. Listen. Want to pray. 
I'm, we want to pray away the spirit of self. There's nothing like that, but I don't know. We just have to pray. This self, self-centeredness, as it has blocked us from touching certain places in God. Self. Even to stay in church, all through the service, we are just looking at time. You, the, nobody wants to do anything for God. Nobody wants to go beyond the normal. Yet they want to see extraordinary results. It doesn't come like that. No. He said, gather together my people, my saints, those who have made a covenant of sacrifice. Brothers and sisters, if you are ready to go all out with God, if you are ready to sow yourself as a seed, God is ready to raise you to deliver a generation. Can we pray and say, Lord, deliver me from self. Deliver me from self. Deliver me from self. Deliver me from self. There are greater things you are calling me to. There are higher heights you are calling me to. Deliver me from self. 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 The Bible says of the early church, it said none lacked among them because those who have lands and possessions sold it and brought the money into the church. The early church was a church of sacrifice. They were there to sell so they could see the power and the grace of God. God could move amongst them because they gave their Oh, There's a system of dominion. It is called sacrifice. Lord, deliver me from self. Give me the grace, the heart. The heart to give my own. Whether it's the sacrifice of obedience, whether it's the sacrifice of alignment. There's a price for a generation. There is a price for a community. There is a price for a territory. There is a price for the deliverance of a family. Gather together to me, my saints, those who have made a covenant of sacrifice. The sacrifice of prayer, the sacrifice of devotion, the sacrifice of time with God, the sacrifice of resources. Lord, I give you my, I give you my soul. I live for you. Oh, every breath that I take, every moment I'm away. Lord, I so Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for There's a call to a price. 
and there is a price for every call it is a system of dominion it is a it is a system for honor it is a route for grace and for glory the lamb of god that was slain from the foundations of the world I am desperate for you. ended this series today but listen one of the things i prayed to god when he asked me to teach this was that god will give us a large heart not only to believe but to be obedient to the things that we will hear listen to me there is a call to a price and there is a price for every call Jesus paid the ultimate price for us here and we must be willing to lay down our life some of you are anointed to deliver your families some of you are anointed for territories some of you for nations why set out on a career without understanding how to appropriate some of these principles Especially those of you that are in the military, you are in the armed forces, you travel up and now you go to different places, you are at the war front. Let me tell you the truth. Find a way to, to, to enter a covenant of sacrifice with God. You are in the military or you are into ministry. Find a way. Are you hearing me? Listen, God can lead you. And that's the reason why I'm not going to ask for anything. But I just taught you so that you will know just in case god is speaking to anybody at any time of your life and these are the things he's telling you either he's talking about love or he's talking about sacrifice that you will be aware that these are systems in the kingdom that guarantee dominion and it's because he wants to set you up every year bishop Oedipo, they have what they call shilo and there's something they used to end that program they call it shilo sacrifice now look at that ministry over the years sacrifice have brought them to a point where they can represent the body of Christ in the aspect of kingdom wealth I have never seen a living faith church that is poor I've never even in the village I have never seen a living faith church go in a village their church is usually the biggest maybe you compare them with Catholic I'm sorry I'm not being I'm just telling you I'm practical here a sacrifice I have studied those men I study their lives every year especially those ones that are pioneers and I see the price that they pay to have transgenerational relevance the word of God has come to us today may God give us grace to be obedient may God give us the grace and the heart of love and the willingness to be committed to the principle of sacrifice and by reason of your obedience to the things you have heard may you see the hand and the grace of God at work in your life may your obedience deliver your family may your obedience rescue men and women may your obedience open doors for a generation 
in the name of Jesus Christ. While you are still standing, if you are here, the greatest sacrifice is giving your heart to the Lord. All standing everywhere, if you are here and you are not born again, you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, or you want to rededicate your life, you were once a believer but certain things have happened and you are not sure of your commitment to salvation. You want to be sure, so you want to rededicate your life. Wherever you are standing, I want you to pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe that you died. You paid the ultimate price for my salvation. I receive.